You know to me. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Welcome to the Randy cast. Welcome to Randy side. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to another edition of Ringside. Ringside. I'm John. I'm Kendra. And boy, oh boy, we've got the the Ringside Spectacular for you today. We've got uh, musical entertainment. We've mm. got a comedy act. We've got food. I thought for a second, I thought you were talking about our, our topics. Because one of them is indeed a musical act. Oh, yeah, you're right. And and then you started, you went off the deep end and I I try to make it sound like something big and grandiose. Nope. It's Thursday night. It's 8.39 p.m. All right, well, <laughs> Baby, welcome. Yes, at the time of this recording, it is Thursday night. Um, Listen, we're, we're, we're busy. We're booked and blessed. You know, we have to, we have to make time for Does the people. Does it count as booked and blessed when it's like full-time jobs? It's not hey, gig listen. work. Hey, listen. That's booked and blessed to someone, baby. That's true. That's true. Um, and yes, we're booked and blessed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're we're all aboard the Randy train right now. Um, went to a WWE live event a few weeks ago. Um, mm-hmm. Had a hell of a time. It was a birthday present from my better half over here. So, yeah, John's birthday was last week. Happy birthday. Happy I turned birthday, 21. John. I can drink now. Wee. Yee, 21 plus 10. Wee. All right. You didn't. All right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, but speaking of Randy Orton, um, I wanted to talk about this because this is such a random story. Frankly, an, it, an unbelievable story. An unbelievable story, but the plot only thickens as the days go by. Um, so at SummerSlam, we know we had the match. Uh, Logan Paul, because of course, a story like this in, involves this fucking guy. Um so Logan Paul had his match with LA Knight, and in there he had a couple of guests take him to the ring, one of them being uh, Machine Gun Kelly, otherwise known as MGK. And right after SummerSlam, MGK popped up on Logan Paul's podcast, Impulsive. And he told this story basically saying that he told off Randy Orton, was like, hey, fuck you, man, um, because supposedly he had heard that Randy Orton said some shit about him in the past. And it was the clip is so jarring because he's like, I'm on a I'm on my annual Jersey Shore rewatch, mm-hmm. right? And you know, in the later seasons of the original run, Mike, the situation, he starts to get real paranoid, and he's always thinking that people are like talking about him or planning to do something to him. Yeah, he was struggling. Um, so, this is what this felt like, and he was just like, I try so hard to be like peaceful, and like I try, I'm trying to work on who I am, but then. I see something or someone and I just like three, two, one. Hey, fuck this. Hey, fuck you, man. It was so weird. It was such a weird like clip. And Logan Paul's just like, oh, shit, bro. Really? That happened? (laughs) But he's just saying how he he told off and cursed out Randy Orton. So Randy Orton popped over on X and was like, all he did was he tagged Machine Gun Kelly and put that little emoji with the growing nose, the Pinocchio Mm -hmm. nose, just calling him a liar. That prompted... (laughs) MGK to respond back on X saying that, oh, there were cameras around. Tell WWE to release it. (laughs) Also, you know, I got your number. You have my number and I won't put you on blast as to why, but check your text messages. (laughs) It was like, okay, what? Are we setting up some kind of like future moment in some PLE somewhere? I hope not. That's a waste of Randy's time. Um, Yeah. And then Xavier Woods chimed in and was like, Hey, listen, if anyone were to tell off, curse out Randy Orton, they wouldn't be able to tell that story later. And here's the thing. I've seen I've seen Machine Gun Kelly. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, we just spelt. saw him in that in that movie. Uh, yeah. Jackpot. Yeah. Jackpot. He was in that for whatever fucking reason. Scrawny little guy. He Well, he's tall. I'll give him he's tall. But he's lanky. But he is lanky. Yes. Scrawny. And. Again, we just we just saw Randy Orton, got the pleasure of seeing Randy Orton perform live. And even from like a hundred feet away. Mountainous. The man is huge. He's huge. <laughs> this Randy, this this new uh, patched up version of Randy, they like fused his spinal column and he gained fifty pounds of pure muscle. It's crazy. He 
looks like he ate himself. He yeah, he's he's fucking massive. It's huge. <laughs> and I'm like there's there's no way. And maybe he did say that and he had like a fucking crew around him or something to like protect him. But I'm like there there's no there's no way. Like I don't buy it. And if it is an angle, I'm like can we just can we fucking not unless I'm going to get to see MGK take a tasty RKO out of nowhere. And, you know, maybe he will. Maybe he fucking will. It just seems like a really random, because, like, I don't know, any, maybe, hey, listen, maybe this is just me. I don't know anyone who's, like, jonesing for Machine Gun Kelly to be part of anything WWE. I mean, Even he, he's his done appearance. It in the past. What'd you say? He's done it in the past. He he's took like, a powerbomb from KO. Well, I, I, he keeps popping up then. But that was like years ago. Like maybe he's a wrestling fan. I assume he is, but and like that's why he keeps getting. I just don't want to see him. There. It was just like weird. I, 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 listen, I don't know anything about Machine Gun Kelly. I've never listened to a single one of his songs. The only thing I know about him is that he dated um, Megan Fox. Are they still together? I don't I think know. Think so. That's that's all I know about him, and that's because I. It's not by choice. Because of Megan Fox, yeah. So like. I don't know if he has some kind of like scrappy past. We're, we'll go through it as a, two lines of thinking. Either this is like future, this is a setup for some kind of future moment in some PLE or whatever. Like you said, it's like Randy doesn't need that. Um, and if it's not that, then it's just a very not um, intelligent move. Yeah, he- I wouldn't say hello to Randy Orton, let alone fuck you. Like, it's just so ill-advised. I, I can't, and for that reason, I can't believe that it's true or genuine. Yeah, he's got a scrappy past, all right. Fucking scrappy do. You know, like in the movie? Mm-hmm. I was holding on to that. I had, so, sorry, guys. When you have a touch of the uh, ADHD. You were waiting that whole time while I was talking so you could do your scrappy do. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. Sometimes when you have that, mm-hmm. if you don't get it out. It hurts. It hurts. It like festers it. in there. No, I get that. Um, I get so that. that's usually, what that was about. Usually, when that happens to me, though, my it's because they're funny, and I need it. I get I need to let them rip. Scrappy dude. Listen, all great art is subjective. Okay. Remember, in someone might be listening to this and get a real fucking kick out of it, and most of you can't stand it, and <laughs> that's fair. Do you remember in um, Scooby Doo? <laughs> The live action Scooby Doo when I can't remember which part it is. I think it's as scrappy inside of Mr. Bean is like doing his <laughs> doing his bad thing and he goes, I will absorb the energy core. That line just by itself is like it's been stuck in my head for weeks and I just randomly say it. I will absorb the energy core. Like it had like no other part of that scene is in my head except for that. I hear it all the time. Do you think... What mental illness is that, do you think? <laughs> That's your OCD. Yeah, it's possible. Just obsessing over this one line <laughs> from line over 2002's over. Scooby-Doo. I can hear it so crisp in my head. Um, do you think when James Gunn was writing Scooby-Doo, mm-hmm. the movie, mm-hmm. that he was like, hey... You know what people are really going to love? Scrappy-Doo inside of Mr. Bean. (laughs) Do you think people want Scrappy-Doo? I feel like Scrappy-Doo inside the main bad guy, that was written. I think that main bad guy happened happened to be Mr. Bean, and that was just... That was the Lord doing his thing. Yeah. Do you think that God stays in heaven because he is afraid of what he's created? You know? And we found a way to work. In the first 10 minutes, so this is pretty impressive. In the first 10 minutes of this episode, we've found a way to talk about WWE, mm-hmm. shit on MGK, mm-hmm. uh, bring up Scrappy Doo and Scooby Doo, mm-hmm. and, and quote Spy Kids too. And travel over to Spy Kids too. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, but. Anyway, going going back to the matter at hand, um, not Randy Orton's first beef with a rapper. Okay. He once. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. He once had uh he once had beef with Soldier Boy. Hmm. What year was that? Years and years and years ago. I don't even remember what it was about, but they were just talking shit to each other on Twitter. Two thousand three, um, like <laughs> Who's having beef with Soldier Boy? I don't remember what it was about, but I'm like, what? Randy. And it what? wasn't it wasn't anything to do with like wrestling. I'm sure it developed. It started there, and then it was like, oh, I could kick your ass. I know I could mm. kick your ass, but I'm like, listen, yeah. Randy, when he was skinny, it was a scary man. Like, yeah. we were just talking about this yesterday. He's such like an intense person. Yeah. And even if being a dad softened him up, like in his personal life. If that motherfucker is running at me, ready to power slam my big old ass, like, I don't know. Like, he's a frightening man. (laughs) If Randy Orton even spoke sternly to me, I would cry. (laughs) I would cry. (laughs) Honestly, when most people speak sternly to me, I do cry. So if it's like Randy Orton, no, I couldn't do it. See, this is why you, this is why I don't like meeting people. Hmm. Because if I got a whiff that Randy Orton was disappointed in me. Or like annoyed. I, my life would be over. I'd just rather never, ever meet him. Yeah. Ever. I feel that. Yeah. I'm sure he's nice. He seems nice. Yeah, he seems nice. Um, but just like, don't like, don't piss him off. Because I feel like a lot of people also think that because they think wrestling is like fake. It's just a bunch of very built actors running around on on um, a big stage in the round, if you will. I feel like they don't think, they think their muscles are like vanity muscles. Right. It would hurt to get hit by Randy Orton. He's a wrestler, right? It would get, it would hurt. I think he knows how to throw a punch and I think it would hurt. So I feel like people are a a little bit too quick to, to run their mouths because they think they're running their mouth to an actor, which run your mouth to an actor. They can't do shit to you. But, like, some wrestlers, uh, I don't know, I think they could beat your ass. That, that actually was a funny bit from the movie that we watched, Jackpot, where all these people are trying to kill this girl because she won the lottery, right? But a running gag in the movie is that she knows stage fighting. Mm-hmm. She knows stage combat. So anytime she goes to actually hit someone, it, it doesn't land because she's <laughs> only ever learned how to, like, make it look real. Yeah. But not actually hit anybody. That's not, that's not this. No. <laughs> He can hit. Um, I think he can hit. I mean, like, yeah, it's it's staged, but sometimes these motherfuckers are beating the shit out of each other. You can't stage a gun chop. And, and we the saw fucking, it. We saw it happen. The welts that show up on your chest. You can't fake that. We saw fucking Gunt's ch- chest bleeding on live pay-per-view. Yeah, it was disgusting. Yeah, so anyway, don't, so like, don't fucking do that. Guys, don't... Don't get in beefs with Randy Orton. I feel like I shouldn't have to tell you that, but it appears we do. do no one, nobody get into a beef with Randy Orton. You're with, not going to win. With Randy Orton's new powerful back, he could show up anywhere, anywhere, anytime, anytime, give you a tasty RKO out of nowhere. You'd be out. And do you think anyone would help you? Do you think anyone would raise a hand against Randy Orton to assist you? Imagine you are walking through... Oh. A mall, right? They're pretty deserted, right? Yeah. You're, but you know what? It's a more, it's one of the more popular days. Back to school, tax free season. You're walking. You're doing your shopping. You're with your family, your loved ones. You go by an Auntie Anne's. You're getting Ooh. some fucking those uh, cinnamon bites. The cinnamon sugar nuggets. The cinnamon sugar nuggets. You're getting Ooh. some of the the ones with the little wieners and little glizzies. Yeah. Delicious. You go to pop one of those suckers in your mouth. Bam. RKO into the fucking fountain right in front of the Auntie Anne's. Randy Orton. Takes your wiener, dogs. Takes your mom and dad by their hands. Starts walking around the mall with them. He's their son now. That's no, Sorry, you're no parents. You were replaced by Randy Orton, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Do you think the, your parents are gonna raise a hand of Randy Orton for you? No, they'll cut their losses. A Handy Orton. They have a more successful, more handsome son now. Um, the anyway. R in RKO stands for replaced. You're sorry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> replaced kid out <laughs> anyway we've been talking about randy orton for quite some time do we want to move on to something i can else? i can talk about randy orton i can talk about Ra- for a whole episode we could do a randy cast if we want but we won't we won't <laughs> and we might let's pivot a little bit okay. um sticking in the world of theater ladies and gentlemen guys gals and non-binary pals it's official we are on a warrior watch mm-hmm, we are on a warrior watch for those who don't know 
I'm so tired. Continue on. <laughs> Any, anyway, Lee Manuel Miranda, Lin Manuel Miranda, and Isa Davis uh, are working on a concept album for their musical adaptation of The Warriors. And truly, they are having, especially Lin, they're having their Avengers Endgame portals <laughs> moment. Like just everyone coming out of the woodworks because this, the cast for this concept album, it's not even a stage musical yet. It is just an album. This cast is insane. Just the most crazy casting decisions from all walks of life. And I'm like, man, how? I I don't know. Anyway, we're just going to go through the casting because I don't know what this means for an eventual Broadway stage production. Because this is originally how Hamilton was slated to start. was as a concept album. It started that way, but then it just kind of made its way. It was like fast-tracked almost, um, even though he'd been working on it for like 10 years. Anyway, I'm going to go down the list of the casting announcements so far. Okay. I do not believe we are done casting this bad boy. So the next time you hear us, that's all I'll be talking about. Have you ever seen The Warriors? No. Are you familiar with The Warriors at all? I know. Come out and play. Yeah. That's all I know. I don't know anything about you know, it. Can you dig it? Well, I have heard that before. Well, that's The Warriors. I didn't know that. Yeah. And uh, there's a really great American Dad episode that parodies The Warriors, but we'll talk about that later. Or or we won't. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm running down the, the casting here. The Turnbull ACs will be played. And again, I don't know how many of these groups are in the actual book or the movie or if these are like created for the show. Okay. So... I don't know what the concept is for this, so I'm very excited to learn more. The Turnbull ACs will be played by Luis Figueroa, Flaco Navaja, and Mark Anthony. Now, when I say... That's not just, you know, Mark Anthony from fucking Chino Hills, California. <laughs> this is the Mark Anthony. I know that one. What the fuck? <laughs> and I, I guess know- it makes sense he was in the In the Heights movie, so he has that relationship with Lynn. Who was he in that? He was um, Sonny's dad. He had that one scene and he was fucking super skinny. I don't remember. But that makes sense. Has he done anything musical before? Yes, he has. I think he's actually been on Broadway before. Um, oh, years and years and years ago. That. But that was before he was like Mark Anthony, you know? Oh. And they're also both like Puerto Rican icons. So like it's just it's crazy to, to see this collab happening this mm-hmm. way, right? Now the Bronx, the, as in the borough, the Bronx BX... Gra- gra- boogie down. The boogie down <laughs> will be played by Chris Rivers. Now, if you're a, like a hardcore hip hop fan, you know who Chris Rivers is. Crazy talented MC. But what a lot of people might not know, um, if you're not kind of invested in his story or at least familiar enough with him, he is actually the son of the late Big Pun. I know that one too. Yeah. So, all right. I've only ever known Chris Rivers as a rapper. So, like, to think that he's doing any sort of acting or anything in this is fucking cool. But also, I'm like, Oh man, like he's got that lineage that you're like, I don't know. It's just, it's powerful. There's something powerful. Again, another Puerto Rican icon. Now, there's a group called the Hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Now, so far, we've been very like music, you know, oriented. For the Hurricanes, we've got Michael Kilgore, who some, that might not be as much a household name to some, but if you're like like a Broadway nerd, you've, you know, you know him from like Songs for a New World. He was in the Jesus Christ Superstar Live with John Legend. Um, Who's he in that? He was in the ensemble, but he was like a featured soloist several times. Oh, he I has wouldn't. dreads and like the, the fucking highest voice you've ever heard. Unless he was John Legend or, or Brandon Judas. Vic- I, Brandon Victor Dixon. Yeah. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Sarah Bareilles. Maybe Sarah Bareilles. That was a good production. Anyway. <laughs> Michael Kilgore. Amazing voice. Michaela J. Or I, I believe they were formerly their, their stage name or TV name was uh, MJ Rodriguez. But they go by Michaela J. Also fucking cool. I know they they played uh, Audrey in Little Shop a couple years ago. So excited to see them kind of still doing their musical theater thing. And then you got Billy Porter. I know that one too. <laughs> so to think I have Chris Rivers and Billy Porter on the same album yeah. is fuck and Mark Anthony on the same album is crazy to me. Staten Island. Here's where shit gets real crazy. The role of Staten Island or the I don't even know I don't even know if it's a role. Staten Island will be portrayed. By throw him up, Kendra. Oh, the fucking Wu Tang, Ghostface Killer, and the RZA, the fucking RZA. Funny story. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. 
Okay, so I assume these people are are in the Wu Tang Clan. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Wasn't the Wu Tang Clan drafted? <laughs> um, that's the only. Okay, the only point of reference I have for Ghostface Killa. <laughs> I was telling John this. I didn't think that that was a real person because they use that name in Thirty Rock all the time as a joke, and I don't think he ever showed up on 30 rock and if he did i thought he was just an actor portraying a <laughs> fake character. i didn't know that was a real person yeah because what kind of name is that so again just to keep track mark anthony chris rivers billy porter michaela J, and the fucking wu-tang clan <laughs> all in the same musical concept album yeah that's crazy and i wish it stopped there no <laughs> i don't because the the more announcements they make the crazier this gets so the orphans will be played by, I, I'm going to try and say his name. He's known as UTK from Free, Freestyle Love Supreme. Utkarsh Ambutkar, I think is how you say his name. If I if I butcher that, I apologize. Um, and Casey Likes. Now again, UTK, known from Freestyle Love Supreme. He's in Ghosts. He was mm-hmm. in the original like Hamilton Workshops. He was in Pitch Perfect. He was in Pitch Perfect. Mm-hmm. I forgot he was in Pitch Perfect. So that's fucking cool. Love to see him still keeping his boys on. I'm just waiting for them to eventually announce... Uh, Chris Jackson in this fucking thing. I was going to say, do we even need to announce Chris Jackson? He's going to be in it He's going to be there. I know. I saw this one earlier today. These next few I saw today. The Borough of Manhattan is going to be portrayed by Cameron. Fucking kill a cam from the Dipset crew. What the fuck? Uh, Again, this is like, you're getting into like hip hop, like nerd shit. Like Mm. he, he had a few like popular hits. Um, back in the day, but his most his most famous hit was probably "Oh Boy," which you probably recognize if you heard it. Mm. Like him, Jewel Santana, Jim Jones, you know, bowling. That oh. that's that's Dipset. That's Dipset. Um, oh, okay. So I'm like, and they're from Harlem. So like, oh my god, <laughs> you got fucking kid. So now again, keeping track: Mark <laughs> Anthony, Chris Rivers, Bailey Porter, fucking the RZA and Ghostface Killer, UTK and Cameron on the same musical album. Then fresh off of his like Oscar season. The role of Masai of the Gramercy Riffs, fucking Coleman Domingo, Academy Award nominated, maybe even winning actor Coleman Domingo, just casually in this fucking album. That's a cool name. It's a really cool name. Um, I'm Googling these people as you say it. And then the cops uh, were announced for this musical concept album, David Patrick Kelly and James Remar. Now, those... They're old. They're two older actors. They were actually both in the original Warriors movie. Oh, not as cops. I think this as like other gang members. I think David Patrick Kelly might have been like the main villain of mm-hmm. the movie. So that's everyone we've got now. And the more I learn about this show or this album, and the more casting I see, because essentially the Warriors is like the actual. I keep wanting to say band, the gang, the Warriors. They basically get framed for offing like the head honcho who's like Mm. oversees the chancellor of all the gangs of new york and they get framed for it and so all the gangs in new york are trying to get them and they're just running they're basically just trying to outrun to stay alive so i'm very curious how this translates onto the stage musically i see the vision and i'm like i'm so fucking down for it all i don't know how much of this means anything to you but to me (laughs) <laughs> I'm excited that you're excited. This seems like the type of project that's like made for you. Like you are the core audience for something like this because you know who all these people are, first of all. But also you share that like, I don't know, you and Lynn would get along so, so well because you share so many common passions. So I'm also interested to see the people whose names I do recognize, very few, but they're from like all over the fucking place right. musically career wise so i'm like really interested to hear the final product yeah and see how it all comes together um yeah i just i mean it's no secret you kind of alluded to it like i'm into so many different things um and i, I love so many different types of music or just a lot of different types of art right so like just the vision that I see, I'm like, okay, well, you have like Mark Anthony in there, so I assume we'll have some sort of like some sort of salsa, mm-hmm. like inspired music in there, 
We'll have some like fucking boom bap with Chris Rivers and the Wu Tang Clan there. But then I see like Michael Kilgore, uh, Michaela J, and Billy Porter, and I'm like, I mean, yeah, that's Broadway proper, but also like the idea of there being like some sort of like ballroom inspired. Ooh. like house music almost like think. this is where my fucking brain goes the the orphans seeing utk or hearing utk like beatbox while the other one's rapping i don't know like there's so many different things that could be happening here that i'm like i don't know it he, seeing that lynn was adapting lynn and isa davies um were, were adapting something as opposed to like doing something wholly original was also exciting because mm-hmm. so far he's done wholly original works right so taking something that already exists well, mostly Holy I know he Hamilton was based off of a book. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, and a person. But anyway, so I am beyond fascinated by this album. Um, Is there any kind of like estimated release? Oh yeah, I think it's oh. coming out in October. Like two months from now. Yeah. Oh. I think. I think. Interesting. Um, so we won't have to wait super long. So uh, yeah, I don't know, but I, I just think this is this is the most excited I've been about a musical in a hot minute. Granted, it is a Lin Manuel joint, so yeah. I can't help. But I like his other two. Don't like love Moana. Bring It On, huh? So I don't love Bring It On, but I don't know that that's as much him that I dislike about it as it is like the style the other the other guys. But yeah, if y'all have any fucking thoughts on. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe next week they'll announce Randy Orton is in. Is on. Actually, Lynn's been popping up at a few WWE joints. I wouldn't be we, surprised if we saw if we heard a wrestler on this. A wrestler, yeah. Oh, fucking Who's, Roman who, Reigns. Whoa, who wrestles but also could do like a sing song? Uh, Pretty Deadly. <laughs> Famously, they're trying to get into a musical. Pretty Deadly, Joe Hendry, um, do it. Shotzi. Scarlet. Scarlet. Yeah, because they went to sing and dance college. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. A lot of options. A lot of options. A there. lot of options. He'd be like, can you dig it? Acknowledge me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so let us know what you think about um, this fucking cast so far or any thoughts you might have on the Warriors musical. All right. We got one more topic for y'all today to on this fine summer's eve. I think it's fall technically. <laughs> Not here, brother. High today, 92. Oof. That's no. That's not fall. All right. So we've kept our mouths fucking shut on all the social medias mm-hmm. and the podcasts and the what have you about this next thing. Mm-hmm. But I figure it's time. The, the dust has settled a little bit. A little bit. But I think we've had enough time to sit with it and gotten some more information that I think we're ready to talk about it now. Okay. The Acolyte. Yeah, so a couple right. episodes ago, we did a whole ass review on season one or more appropriately the series (laughs) and we talked a lot about what we really loved about the show and what was really exciting um so the acolyte may or may not be canceled it's sounding more and more like it is um deadline released an article uh about a few days ago maybe about a week ago at this point claiming that the show would not be returning for season two now i think it is important to point out that disney and lucasfilm have not made an official announcement about the show's cancellation or it's not returning so before before we get into amanda senberg's comments or should i just go with her comments first before we give our own thoughts i mean either i think either way is fine uh, no let's just talk about our our initial like reaction okay. color me fucking shocked I was very surprised when they announced that, well, when it was released, when it was said that I wouldn't be coming back for season two. Yeah. And just, I was frustrated and I was mad and I was just disappointed. Yeah. I wasn't as shocked because I'm a cynic. (laughs) I just, I'll say what I said to you when this article came out. And again, the article's unconfirmed, but I feel like such a big publication wouldn't post something like that if they did not have a reliable source telling them that. Right. My other conspiracy theory is that Disney purposefully planted this story to see what people would say. Right. My it, truth. And I mean, that's smart if so. But like, if the issue is viewership, that's one thing. Making stuff like this, it's a business. As much as that sucks. <laughs> and as much as business ruins everything and we hate it. If it doesn't get the viewership, if it doesn't make money, it's a risky investment to move forward. I get that. I don't know what the viewership was like. I don't know if anyone does because I don't know if they released that information. So if it wasn't that, 
then the only thing I can think it could be was the very vocal, I believe, minority of people who had nothing but hateful things to say or complained about whatever they could to mask the real things that they were upset about. Because we try to do it. The the way to criticize something is to do it with the hope that the thing gets better from it. Not to do it with the hopes of bringing it down because you went into it not liking it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like we try to see the good with the bad and focus on the good without being delusional and not thinking that the bad exists. Right. I feel like so many people went into it looking for the bad and then found whatever they could find that they didn't like and then amplified it by a hundred and then spread it out into the world and ignoring everything that could have possibly been good. I might just be biased because I, I did like the Acolyte. Let's start there. But it just feels very much like a loud kid really wanted their way and the bad parent gave them what they wanted. Right. It's just like, so I, f- I felt like, and again, maybe this was just me being in a bubble. I don't know. But I felt like a lot of people, even if they had criticism overall, their experience of watching The Acolyte was positive and they enjoyed the world building, I guess, because we didn't have anything else for this live action in this time. They enjoyed what could have happened with the with the seeds that we were planting in this season. And it just feels like the people who scream the loudest get to have their way. And I don't know if that's the best way to handle it when the people screaming the loudest oftentimes are complaining about stuff like women being so featured, people of color being the main focus, like all of this yeah. stuff. And I know that a lot of people also say like people who downplay the complaints of people who didn't like the Acolyte will use, oh, well, they were just racist and sexist as like a, a blanket statement for all of those criticisms, valid or not. I understand that opinion. But when you have the star coming out to me like, saying I had the most racist hurtful, hateful shit said to me before, during, and after this came out, you can't ignore that. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know. It just felt very much like, to me, scorned because I liked the Acolyte and I was excited to see more of it. It just felt like an iPad kid (laughs) having a meltdown. So their parent did what they shouldn't have done and gave in to what they wanted. Completely. No, I completely agree. And what's crazy is that we saw this happen. This happened not, it hasn't even been 10 years. We saw that this is why we got, and I know I've seen a lot of people say this on on like TikTok. This is exactly how we got uh, The Rise of Skywalker. Mm. A movie that uh, I can watch most Star Wars things and find something to enjoy about it. I, I Whatever. I am not the biggest fan of the prequels. Does that, I, I think every single time we've stayed at a hotel usually on a Disney trip, if the prequels are on, I'm watching the prequels. (laughs) I'm turning it on because there's still shit. It's still Star Wars. There's Mm -hmm. still shit I enjoy about it. Even if I don't love them, I do. I I, I love Revenge of the Sith. But even that has some goofy shit in it. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't love the prequels. They're not my favorite. They are a lot of people's favorites. And that's fine. That's cool. But we just saw this with people freaking out about The Last Jedi so much. Like in the time of IPs and sequels, and reboots and requels, right? People complain about nothing original. So when something like The Last Jedi comes out and tries to take a big swing with an existing property, people freak the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Disney and Lucasfilm overcorrected, gave fan service, fan service, fan service to the point that we got this movie. That's just a movie. I don't I don't think I hate The Rise of Skywalker as much as a lot of people. I think it's I think it's fine. I think it's fun. I think it's the best of a real shit situation they put themselves in, which was, okay, we'll get the people like the force awakens. So we'll get that director back and people wanted to see this. So we'll do this. And people want to know who Ray's family is. or we'll do that. And it, 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 there was like no mystery. There was no excitement. It was, it was just a movie, you know, like, and it's fine. It's not the first star Wars movie. I go back to be like, Oh, I'm excited to rewatch this. I will go back and rewatch the force awakens right now. Like I love that movie. I think that movie's great. I'll go back and watch Re- rogue one. Right now. That's a great movie. And I know you use examples of like newer movies, whatever, get over it. So we just saw this happen. And so now people were all crazy about The Mandalorian. 
They were all crazy about this, all crazy about that. And then as soon as something is like not quite as good or it's just it's doing a slow build, they freak out. So what does what does Disney Lucasfilm do? They allow the show to be created a big swing, completely new era, for the most part, completely new characters to, you know, mainstream audiences. Mm hmm. And they do a lot of cool shit. They approach the show unlike they've approached any other Star The Star Wars shows are a relatively new thing. We haven't had a movie since, what, 2017, whenever, 2019, when that movie, when The Rise of Skywalker came out. We haven't had a Star Wars movie since then. So the, the, the TV shows are a new thing. And so we finally have the show that's taking this big risk and just doing something really cool. And we talked about it on our review. Like, yeah, I can I can see how the pacing of the first few episodes on their own might seem wonky. I think it makes more sense once we have the full season. Um, then you can kind of see what's happening. But, like, I, I agree. I think some, some of the episodes were too short. It created for a weird weird pacing issue. Mm-hmm. And there was some clunky dialogue. But whatever. That, I could look over that because it's Star Wars. Like, there's Do clunky remember- dialogue. The first season of Parks and Rec, I don't, how ass it was. I never watch it. Anytime exactly. I rewatch it, I just I go straight to season two. I go midway through season two. That's why it's so frustrating. And I get that that's like a whole different fucking thing, especially like budget wise. But like, again, nothing. you're not ever going to make anything perfect. No one is ever going to make anything perfect except for that one Scooby-Doo live action movie. <laughs> like, it just doesn't exist. You can't strive for it. No matter right. what Disney and Lucasfilm do, everything that they put out will get shit on. Right. Even a little bit. So it's like, I don't know. It's just so frustrating when things aren't even given a chance. Right. Well, and that's the that's the other part of this is like the people who, and I've also seen this, so I don't want to take complete credit for this idea. Okay. I It's a sentiment I agree with. I've seen several times. And the idea is that the people who are complaining, this vocal minority you were talking about, who complained and bitched and moaned if they really won... And they really got their way and the show's canceled and it's not coming back. Although 20 years, I'll see a chimere. Trust me. <laughs> the audience just has to age into making movies. If they actually won, that is the worst possible outcome for Star Wars fans because you will get no more risks. You will get no more practical sets. You will get no more props. You will get no more lightsaber battles like that. Oh my God. The lightsaber battles were so cool. And we had physical environment sets that they built. Right. You will get no more interesting <sighs> characters. You won't get Darth Plagueis because guess what? All of that shit was here. And you voicing how much you hated that. Guess what? You're going to get <laughs> your Luke Skywalker love island that I've created on TikTok. <laughs> um because that's all you want is you want your the same shit you've had for 20 30 years and it's it's really unfortunate 50? um and i know people are you know going back to your parks and rec comparison yeah like the the time of just letting something build letting the the filmmakers the tv makers the showrunners the actors the writers get a chance to really fully understand these characters like it's really unfortunate. Like, you're not going to get season three of Game of Thrones on the first try, you know? At least with Andor, one, the actor and director and the writers have been working with this story for since Rogue One. Mm-hmm. So they had a little bit of a leg up, right? But, like, I don't know. So it, it's just, it's really disappointing. And yeah. uh, Amanda Stenberg actually had this to say on a, on an Instagram story of hers. So I'm reading this. Uh, this is a quote. I'm going to be transparent and say it's not a huge shock for me. There has been a rampage of vitriol that we have faced since the show was even announced when it was still just a concept and no one had even seen it. That's when we started experiencing a rampage of, I would say, hyper conservative bigotry and vitriol, prejudice, hatred and hateful language toward us. And she's right. Yeah. So people can say all they want, like, oh, you're just using that as an excuse to cover up people's valid concerns. Uh, okay, May, you know what, maybe some some people are. But like when the star of your show has said repeatedly, like people keep saying horrifically racist things to me. The issue is there. <laughs> the issue is there. And that taints everyone else's criticisms right. of it. And another thing we need to consider, we did mention it. We were like, maybe they didn't want to come back. Like maybe the actors didn't want to do it. Because crybaby piss boys and girls, women can be anything these days, even (laughs) crybabies, but like they get so fucking upset over nothing that they- Fucking peanut butter sandwiches. (laughs) That they ruin 
shit. Like, I could totally see her being like, hey, I don't want to actually do this anymore. Right. Because they sucked her. the fun right out of it. Um, John Boyega, Kelly Marie Tran, Moses Ingram from the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Yes. Um, it, it's so weird how this keeps happening. Right. Like, And instead of standing up for these people and fighting for their projects, Lucasfilm just says, oh, sorry, sorry. Right. And it takes the star of your show, Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, Ewan McGregor, himself to come out and be like, hey, actually, if you're a fucking racist asshole, you're not actually a Star Wars fan. If you don't like the commentary, you're not actually a Star Wars fan. Oh, yeah, that's a whole separate issue. For some reason, really conservative people don't understand, like... The politics of Star Wars? Right, or anything. Like, they just can't... They don't understand that, like, you're the bad guy <laughs> in this, like, in everything. What's that Euphoria clip where they're like, is this fucking play is about us? Is this fucking play about us? <laughs> or there's this one clip from... I can't remember what show it is. It's some British show. And I think it's supposed to be, like, World War Two, like, German soldiers... Mm. And I think he just looks around. And he's like, are we the baddies? <laughs> and yes, they were like, I feel like, a, but that's just, again, a level of delusion that we frankly, we can't relate to because we don't have it. But like, yeah, like maybe it's the lack of critical thinking right. in our um, current pre- past and future school system. So anyone who's ever like, hmm, why didn't, why don't they teach, uh, you know, art, arts literacy in or media literacy in schools? They do. It's called English class. You fuck. Oh. Uh, <laughs> sorry. But. I do want to end this part of this conversation on a li- what rebellions are built off of hope, right? Oh. Um, ooh. Ooh, sorry. Uh-oh. Sorry. Now, again, Lucasfilm and Disney has not confirmed the cancellation of the show. I do think Amanda Stenberg's comments do confirm it, but being ever the optimist, how cool would it be if one of these unannounced Star Wars shows that they've got cooking up... Mm-hmm was a continuation of the Acolyte story under a different name because perhaps the title, The Acolyte, no longer bears any meaning if Chimere has found his Acolyte, his uh, apprentice. Oshamir. Oshamir forever. Oshamir. That would be fucking cool. I would love to see, even if it's not another series, I would love to see maybe an Acolyte continuation in like the form of a movie or like a a, a duology or or a trilogy. Like... I would love to see that. Like, yeah. if we can't commit to making shows like that, that's fine. I'm okay with that. But, like, I just think it's such a shame. We had so many interesting characters and stories that were brought up that we possibly won't ever see. Yeah. Again, I do believe, though, if we... I don't believe this is the end. Even if it is for right now, I do think we'll see it again at some point. Unfortunately, I do think it'll be in about 10, 15 years. Fucking Manny Jacinto will come up in some badass fight scene in Star Wars. Um... He'll be fucking 50. Fucking 50 and, and jacked. jacked. Uh, yeah, Ma- I, Manny Jacked Cinto. <laughs> I also, I, I don't know, I think we consume too much truly Star Wars and Marvel content right. to ever think that someone, something being canceled, someone no longer playing a role, whatever, someone being Iron Man for 12 years and then leaving and then coming back. Um, I it, There's never like, it's never impossible. Right. Oh, wrestling too. It's never impossible for someone to come back. Just gotta wait for the rumble, baby. You just have to wait for the Royal Rumble. I could see them put it pulling ideas, characters, stuff like for other stuff. But again, like I don't know if I was Amanda Stember, I don't know if I would want to come back and face all that um racism all right. over again to be in anything, even if it's just like a cameo in something. But if this is truly the end of the acolyte, I would I mean I do love your idea of it being Oh yeah, the acolyte's canceled. But this other show, right. you know um chimera star wars story but i would hope that they would at least do more live action stuff in this time period because it's different i just want to see i want to see different stuff oh my gosh i say it all the time i say it all the time if you want to watch the stuff that's just how you remember your stuff being just watch the old stuff over and over again it's fine i do it all the time with winter soldier i get it but we need to do new stuff too Right. Or there will be no old stuff to go back to. So don't watch if you if you didn't like the acolyte, save yourself a headache and just don't watch Skeleton Crew. We'll watch it. It's Goonies in space. It's gonna be fun. They're also kids, so please leave them alone. I've never seen Goonies. Um and I didn't know there were kids in this. In Skeleton Crew? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's like a it's meant it's meant to be a little more I think a little more family friendly. Oh uh, um, Jude Law is in it. Moms love them, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. More than moms. Um but we'll keep y'all posted um, 
on our thoughts it, should anything change for the acolyte but i do hope that um that it's not the end but you know if it is then this is how uh this is how we acknowledge the As the death of democracy go. with thunderous applause this is democracy manifest <laughs> what do you guys think about this whole acolyte thing and if you want to say some fuck shit in the comments Please don't do it. You, if you've made it this far into the episode, I would hope that you would align with our beliefs. But maybe I don't know. Maybe you have a very um, elegant, well-written, not offensive response, which has happened. Which has which happened. Has happened. I, I got a follower on TikTok out of it once. Yeah. Uh, we just had a conversation. We didn't agree, but we had a fine. conversation. And that's fine. Anyway, thank you all for tuning into this edition of Ringside. If you're not already, please follow us on all of the things. And be sure you uh, follow us specifically on Twitch and TikTok. That way you can be notified anytime we go live. We will be going live. Well, actually, this will have already happened by the time this comes out. So oh, yes. you can check us out for our, our live stream called um, oh, Ringside. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Pre-preview where we talk about the upcoming WWE PLEs. Uh, premium live events and make our predictions and talk with the uh with the chat there so yes anyway all right i think that's about that about does it for us it is 9 33 on a thursday night we'll catch y'all on the flip side bye everybody doses <laughs>